Right, welcome to another exciting 4x4 Ventures episode. In this episode, we take you on a a long road trip. So where are we? Behind me, you're looking at the Upper Zambezi, the Mighty Zambezi. We're at a lodge called Island View Lodge, which is situated about 45 kilometers outside of a little town in Namibia, Caprivi, called Katima Malilo. What a fantastic place. We've spent the last five days on the water fishing for the great tiger fish. Unfortunately, it hasn't been great. We timed it right with the moon and everything. Um, and it just seems that there are a couple of issues when it comes to the tiger fish and, and what they're doing this this month. So to all of you avid fishermen out there, if you are coming up to Katima Malila or Island View in the next uh, couple of weeks, I wish you all the best. We didn't catch many. I think we caught three tiger fish, a couple of small ones, which we won't count, um, and seven um, barbell. Our largest tiger fish was 5.7 kgs, just for those who care and want to know. So, our trip. So we left Johannesburg four ways at two o'clock in the morning. We drove all the way through to Martin's Drift Water Post. Got there at about half past nine in the morning. Um, and it was probably one of the most easiest transitions into another country, uh, in this case, Botswana. We entered Botswana and uh, carried on there through. What was really interesting with this trip is that we tried something totally different. And that was going through Sirowe to Letlakane to Arapa, down on the Arapa Road, back towards Francistown, about 45 kilometers. We took a road Road left towards uh, Makhari Khari Pans. We used tracks uh, for Africa on my um, Garmin and it did an absolutely fantastic job. It was on point and I you know I just want to say to the guys to tracks for Africa keep doing what you're doing. It really worked for us and, and, and surprisingly well. excitement of the journey. We carried on through Makhari Khari Pans. It was spectacular taking three and a half hours on the uh, tracks for Africa through the Garmin, but it took us about five, a little over five and a half hours. What a place, an amazing, an amazing place, Makhari Khari Pans. For those of you who haven't uh, been on the salt pans in Botswana, I would highly recommend it. It is a fantastic trip and so scenic, so different. And, and peaceful just a really really great trip so we did that got to Nata a little over eight o'clock in the evening so uh, three hours definitely no but five and a half hours yes more real and from then we filled up with fuel and we, we carried on to elephant sands where we were greeted at night time by about uh, 70 elephant drinking down at the waterhole which was amazing because they literally were three meters away from where where you eat and sit and, and watch them and what a pleasure and, and to be honest with you quite a privilege you know free roaming elephants drinking at a, at a water hole I mean where else can you get that so yeah it was absolutely amazing so we crashed over at elephant sands next morning we woke up and carried on through to Kasani where um, we stopped over at Chobi Safari Lodge and had a lunch snack um, and a bit of a dip in the pool because it is quite hot at this time of the year and I believe it's going to get even more hot as the months progress. Continuing from Kasani, we drove through the Chobi Safari Nature Reserve and on the tar road to get to Ngoma Border Post where we crossed over from Botswana into Namibia, the Caprivi Strip and we continued northwest for 70 kilometers and ended up at Island View Lodge which was about, I don't know, 12 o'clock in midday. So 
So, the real question, how did the Ford Ranger perform on this awesome, awesome trip? Okay, well let me put it this way. For a while I've been questioning the reason as to why I put Old Man Emu suspension on. I thought, if you just put the Old Man Emu suspension on, you know, you, you'll have, yes and you do, greater ground travel, a comfortable ride, um, softer on the, when you go over ruts and, and, and that sort of thing. But I never really fully understood what it all meant, when, when, especially when you're doing a trip like we've just done now. So the first thing I've got to, I've got to say about the Old Man Emu suspension on the positive side is very comfortable on the Ford Ranger. I mean, really, really comfortable. But where it shone and shone above my expectations is when we went off-road into the Makhari pans. It just ate up all the bumps and all the soft sand. It just really, really, um, they performed so well. On the downside though, um, and it's very small, the Old Man Emu uh, suspension seems to get a lot of, make a lot of noise, squeaks and the such. So, yeah, I'll obviously go in and get them serviced and, and looked at, and I think it's got a lot to do with sand particles and, and whatever getting into the leaf springs. So, I think that's maybe it, and, and I'm no suspension guru by any means, but wow just really 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 they, they came into their own and, and i'm very happy that i made that decision to move over from ford's normal suspension to the um, old man emu suspension i give it a big thumbs up really do the next thing i want to chat to you about is the larger tires so i did keep within the normal speed limits in botswana you kind of have to uh, it's a given you will get pulled over so when it says uh, 60 you drop to 60 and you stay at, at 50. Um, so and we didn't get one speeding fine by the way which was great but anyways um, the tires wow absolutely amazing the larger tires that I put on the the Ford Ranger not really great from a fuel consumption point of view and the loss in power point of view but I've mentioned these two factors before but what was really awesome is when we were on the Makhari Khari pans we went through some pretty thick sand they did an amazing job the all terrains really really came into their own the extra um, the extra height gained with the, the 33 inch tires just just made for such a great ride you know I never bottomed out once and we went through some pretty pretty deep divots in the road so they're very very chuffed uh, they just work and, they, and, they, and I'm glad with my choice on the negative side the fuel consumption look I'm getting about 10.2 liters per hundred kilometers at an easy pace under 120 anything over 120 and it climbs up to a steady 12.2 12.5 liters per hundred kilometers you know if you're happy with the compromise the 10 percent loss in power and the lack of fuel efficiency should i say then you know maybe you know maybe don't get the bigger tires but i'm happy with the lift um it, it just seemed to work and, and work very well and we also went over some serious thorn patches and i didn't get it i haven't got a puncture and um, they just they're solid 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 tires very very nice very happy with them the Ford Ranger how did she do on the on the trip well we had three people in the vehicle total a co-pilot and a backseat pilot <laughs> and, um, and I'm laughing because yeah there was a lot of backseat driving but comfortable I spoke to them all the time all the passengers all the time make sure they were comfortable and, and they were the air conditioning system is is really really amazing it's obviously not the environment control air conditioning system it's the base model but it did it, it did a good enough job it, it got around to the back of the vehicle and, and people were comfortable so that's all that really really matters the load bin I will say is a bit of an issue if you if you if you're traveling like me and you, you've just got the tawny cover on the top you get a lot of dust in the back so our bags and um, I have a little Waco fridge 50 liter fridge was covered in white sand but you know what it was part of the trip and part of the adventure so i'm not going to make that, a, that an issue for myself i think in the upgrades to come hopefully you know i'd like to put a, a an aluminium canopy on the back and and, and 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 make the vehicle a lot more dust proof in the front of the cabin like i said no no issues whatsoever i paired up um, the co-pilots my passengers um, cell phones to sync to system and we played music from their phones when they got sick and tired of my music so yeah all in all just 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 really comfortable trip the vehicle handled very well the um, steering response that I've noticed from the Ford Ranger is is amazing and being such a light and nimble steering system I had no battles I had no drivers fatigue uh, when going through and uh, you know it's quite tight in the Makhari Khari pans and we were pushed for time so we had to get off the pans quite quite quickly so we did drive a little bit fast in some areas to try and get off the pans before sunset 
which we didn't do, but I mean, it was still, it was, the vehicle just responded very well. Another big surprise for me was when driving off-road, obviously I would suggest everyone who does go off-road to just switch it over to four high. The stability control kicked in and really pulled us out of some tricky situations when going around corners at a little bit of a fast speed and it just works. It works and, and, and it did a very good job. It is delayed somewhat. I come from the Amarok 2 liter 4x2 and that was a lot more responsive the stability control but that being said it this one just it, it's rock solid and, and and you can feel it when it's working and it flashes on your heads up display just very very good so i'm very very chuffed with the ford ranger the 2.2 i think it does an amazing job and yes you know you will get fuel increase going up when you start to mod your vehicle that can be expected but like i said i'm very happy with the mods i'm a little bit upset though um because of the vinyl wraps that uh, Ink, Ink Monkey Design Factory did for me and, and the uh, accessory that MTBA put on my vehicle for me. In this heat what I've noticed is that the accessories that you do put on to your Ford Ranger, in this heat the 3M tape just, just doesn't hold and doesn't stick, it, it essentially becomes like um, press stick. So I've already lost one of my window guards So and a privileged trip to be honest with you. So I'm very happy with the Ford Ranger. Ford Ranger for the win, the 2.2, very good. So, fishing on the Zambezi, what is that all about? Well, the first thing I've got to tell you is that uh, any, any time after seven, if you're not out on the water, then you shouldn't be fishing. <laughs> it's, it's, a really, it's a really amazing place, um, very beautiful, very picturesque. It's, it's the flood plains of the upper Zambezi, the area that we're in, the Caprivi Strip. It's, it's a massive flood plains that allows the Zambezi to spill over its banks and then recede as, as the months go on. So we've come in October, we were expecting great fishing. Unfortunately, it hasn't panned out that way. That's just the game of fishing. But as you'll see in the footage, you know, you, you're up at seven, you're out on the water, you cruise along, you got to go and purchase bulldogs from the local um, fishermen that are on the side of the Zambian side of the river. Um, you purchase bulldogs, they're a little bait fish um, that the tigers seem to hit, although not on this trip. And then, yeah, you, 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 you basically experiment between what's called drift baiting, where you drop your line in and, and you just move with the current of the Zambezi, or trawling, where you basically choose your Rapala and you know, hook it up on your, on your rod and drop it off the side of a boat and, and then trawl. But I can tell you one thing, we've tried absolutely other than fly fishing, we've tried near enough every kind of fishing you can do to just try and see what the fish are doing. And unfortunately, uh, not many people have been able to, to nail, nail down what's going on. As you'll see in some of the footage, what we did realize is that it seems that netting over the last five to eight years has had a big effect on on the fish and, and, what, and what they're doing and especially the numbers of fish. Unfortunately on the Namibian side it's a little bit more regulated and controlled but because it is a river that a river system that splits the two countries um, on the Zambian side it's a lot more lenient and the chaps the fishermen are able to purchase anything over 10, uh, 10 nets and some of them are really big, so I've been hearing rumors that netting, over netting might be one of the problems as to why the fish are, are not on the bite. They should be this time of year, but you know, that the netting's being a problem and, and maybe the cycles have changed from global warming. Hey? But I mean, otherwise a really great trip. You know, we've, um, we've seen everything we've wanted to see. We've, we've done everything we wanted to do. Yes, and we have caught some fish. So a very great trip to say the least. And as I said in the beginning, we've, we've had an amazing time here. The bird life is 
phenomenal. I, I, I really do suggest if you're a person who loves birding or fishing, then this is a destination for you. Like I said, though, for fishing, just uh, make sure you do your research first and uh, have a look-see to see if the fish are on the bite. Give the guys a call at Island View and they'll tell you if the fish are on the bite or not. But again, thank you to all the subscribers. If you like what we've done, please give us a thumbs up um, below. Subscribe to our channel if you're new and welcome. And uh, just click the little bell icon in the bottom left hand corner of the video you'll get an automatic notification when we upload a video and just you know if you want to stay interested it might help you for those of you who are watching this now please share this video you know post it on facebook share it with friends and family and people in in, in the know and who want to know uh, we appreciate that it's the only way we can uh, share our adventures with you and, and we appreciate it so big thanks to you guys for doing that in the past and um, we'll see you in 2018 it's been a great year and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys then and, and, and show you what we get up to have a safe christmas and enjoy we'll see you soon cheers